Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Kevin. Well, I'm getting so close on our cow pasture project that I think I might even be able to get it done today. We're going to be under a heat advisor here in the Ozarks today. It's supposed to be about 96 with the actual temperature. And they say as hot as 110 in some areas with the heat index. So I'm out early this morning. You can see that it's early, nice and foggy out yet this morning. We get a lot of foggy days here in the Ozarks, especially this time of year when our humidity is up. But it's beautiful out here. Not hot yet, so I'm going to get right to work. I was out yesterday working on this and I was able to get two of the strands of electric fence up around this entire area. This is about a one acre uh, paddock that we're creating here. That means I have four more wires to put up. We're trying to fence this area so that it'll house not only the new family milk cow that we're hoping to get, but also our Nigerian dwarf goats. They can be a little tricky when it comes to electric fence, but we have them trained. We're confident that they're trained well now. And so we're gonna move them back here with six strands of electric wire. I'm gonna get right to work this morning. I'm gonna show you things throughout the day. I've got some exciting things that I'm using on this project that I've never used before. A new type of T-post insulator and just some other things that really are making this project enjoyable to do. But it's not gonna be enjoyable once it gets to 100 degrees, so I need to get to work. The first thing I'm gonna do this morning is continue running the wire around the fence, around the entire perimeter. That is a big job all in itself, so I need to get right to work. Well, I've got the third strand of wire up. That means I'm halfway done with all of the wire. I wanted to take this opportunity though to show you guys before I start on the next strand, these new T-post insulators that I'm using. Uh, I saw these online and was really intrigued by them. Uh, then I saw them in my local uh, farm supply store and I picked some up. These are called lock jaws. The nice thing about these is First of all, they're very well made. You can just tell when you hold them that they're made out of high quality plastic, which is really gonna help protect the T-post from uh, the wire. But the other thing that I really like about these is how universal they are. Most of these insulators that you buy to go on T-post, uh, which just holds the wire away from the post, can only go on the front of a T-post. These can go in six different positions on the T-post. So in this case, I am using them on the front. So you can see this is uh, right here like this on the front of the T-post. But if I decided that I suddenly wanted to run one of the wires on the back of the T-post, these insulators can actually go on the back of the T-post as well which is really, really nice. In the past, you'd have to go out and buy a completely different type of insulator or turn your post around. Uh, but with these, it just makes it so easy. They actually come on and off super easy as well. Uh, I've had to move a couple that I've realized I had in the wrong spot as I'm putting the wire up. And it's so easy to take them off, even with the wire still on, and move it to a different location. You can see that these can go on the side of your post. If you don't have and insulators, you can actually use these as an end insulator by simply putting it on the post like this and then starting your fence by pulling right on the insulator. I mean, these are just so universal. I absolutely love them. Uh, I'm glad that I found this company. Uh, it's a great company. I've done some research on them. Uh, it's actually just a small company out of Indiana, which I like as well that they're made right here in the United States. It was actually started by a farmer uh, who had some trouble with the T-post insulators that he was using. His neighbor just happened to be an engineer. The two of them got together, invented these, and now they're out on the market. A great product. I recommend that you guys check these out. 
I just finished up my first roll of wire by doing those first three strands. For this project, I'm using uh, half mile rolls of wire and I'm using 14 gauge galvanized steel wire. What I've done here is I've just taken a piece of PVC pipe, used some pipe clamps to fasten it to the bale spikes on my tractor. That allows it to spin nice while I unroll it. So it's time to hook up another spool. Again, these are half mile of 14 gauge wire. Perfect, time to start pulling out wire number four. Well, I've got the fourth wire up, two more wires to go, and this paddock will be completely fenced. Now that's not gonna be the end of the project. I still have another gate to put up, and we still need to install our fence energizer to actually electrify the fence. But I think I'll be able to get that all done today. One thing that I'm using also for the first time on this project are these strainers with the built-in insulators. Uh, I picked these up from a company online called Kencove, uh, which has some really great prices on fencing supplies. Um, I like these because they have a built-in insulator right here, so it's the end of your line, and then you can just use your strainer tool, and that's how you ratchet to tighten up your fence. Uh, these are really nice to have. Uh, so that you can get your fence really nice and tight. All right, two more wires to go. I'll see you guys when I get those done. Well, I've got all six strands of wire up. Uh, I've got it all tensioned. It looks great. I'm so happy with the way that these corner braces have worked. Uh, these are the wedge lock corner braces I did a video about a couple weeks ago. They're working out so well. Uh, these new lock jaws. Uh, insulators seem to be doing a really good job. I'm just excited that this project is finally getting to the point where I feel like I'm making some real progress. I feel like I have a real chance of getting this project done yet today. If not today, for sure tomorrow, but I'm gonna just keep plugging away. I still have one gate to put up. I still have the energizer to set up, so I have to put in the grounding rods and set all of that up. And then I need to run some underground wire across where the gates are going to be uh, so that the electric will run uh, under, the, under the ground, across the gate, and back up the other side. That's what I'm going to work on next because at least one of the gates is in the shade. I can take advantage of working in some shade for a little while. I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to run that underground wire. Well, it's the next morning. I didn't get everything finished yesterday because it just got too dang hot. It got up to 110 with the heat index and about 60% humidity. It was just too hot to work. The last parts of what I have to do were right in the sun. I just couldn't do it. So I got out early this morning. You can see I'm already sweaty this morning, starting off about 80 degrees again today and humid, whew, especially in the morning. But I've already been out here for a while getting some more work done. I got both of the underground wires run across the gates. So that means all I have left to do now is to hang that second eight foot gate and then install the energizer and grounding rods and we will be done. Hopefully by late this morning or early this afternoon, we can actually move the goats to this area and see how they like it. I need to get back to work. To install the gate, I'm using the wedge lock gate system. Uh, it's the same company that made the corner braces that we used throughout this project. They also make a kit so that you can hang a gate uh, right from the T-post. Uh, that's what I'm gonna be using to hang this gate. It's a great system and an easy way to put up a gate. All right, well, I've got the gate up. You can see how nicely that wedge lock hardware works uh, for hanging a gate like this. Now, this is an eight foot gate. It's a little bit on the heavy side for this, so I will always have uh, the far end of it sitting on something to take some of the pressure off of that T-post. Uh, because like I said, this, is, this gate is just really a little too heavy to hang off of a T-post, but it still works great. 
I also had to add a second T-post down here at the end uh, just because I left too big of a, a gap when I originally put my posts in. Uh, so I had to fill in that gap a little bit so that our goats won't be able to get through there. Uh, but I'm very happy with the way this is going. The only thing left to do now is install the energizer. So I'm going to put in two grounding rods and then we'll bring the energizer over from the goat's temporary pen and we'll get it all set up. We'll be able to test our fence and make sure everything is working. All right, it's time to start setting up the grounding system for our electric fence. Now, a grounding system is so important to a good electric fence. If your fence isn't properly grounded, your animal won't get a good shock when they touch the fence. And they need to get that shock in order to learn that they should stay away from the fence. So I've moved over our solar energizer here. This is the new Zariba uh, 15 mile uh, energizer that we got. Uh, this is working out so well for us so far. I'm using two six foot galvanized grounding rods. I'm gonna drive these in hopefully at least four feet or as far as I possibly can. Once I get those put in, we'll be using some 12 gauge insulated wire. Uh, this will run from the grounding uh, spot on the energizer to the first grounding rod. And then we'll put in the second grounding rod 10 feet away and we'll run a wire between the two grounding rods. Then we'll uh, hook up the the positive side of the energizer to the fence and we'll be able to test the fence and make sure that everything is working. Uh, if everything goes as planned, two grounding rods should be enough, uh, but if we absolutely have to to get a better ground, I'll go ahead and install a third one. Like I said, you can't have too good of a grounding system on an electric fence. So I'm going to just use my post driver to drive these in and we'll get everything hooked up. All right, so the first grounding rod is in. Unfortunately, I was only able to get this one in about two and a half feet before I just hit solid rock. That is an issue here in the Ozarks that we just have a ton of rock. So if I can't get the other one in any further, then I'm probably gonna have to do three uh, separate grounding rods, but we'll see. Normally on the fences that I do, short fences, one is enough, and on bigger fences, two is enough. So. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it works out, but if we need to, we'll put in a third one. All right, let's put in the second one. Now, one tip that I can give you that I actually didn't do on the first pole, and I should have known better, is to take your grounding rod clamp, which is a little clamp that looks like this, and slide it on your pole before you drive it into the ground, because a lot of times your post driver will bend will mushroom out the end of the pole and then you won't be able to get your clamp on luckily this one didn't mushroom too much and i was able to get it on it was tough but i got it this time i'll put it on first now we need to measure 10 feet from this pole and that's where the second grounding rod will go Well, the second grounding rod is in. I've gone ahead and hooked our energizer up to the fence. And now it's time to use our fence tester to check and make sure everything is working the way it should. If everything goes well, we should get six to 8,000 volts on every wire of the fence. 8,000. 8,000. Eight thousand volts on every wire of the fence, which is exactly what we want. I'll walk around and check it in several spots to make sure there's nothing that's making it short out anywhere. But I would tend to think that if it was, we'd get lower readings. So I'm pretty confident that this fence is ready. It's on. This project is finally coming to an end. I'm so excited. Uh, by this afternoon, we'll be able to move the goats back here. Uh, they'll be able to start eating all of this down and now we can officially be on the lookout for a family milk cow uh, we're so excited i still have a few things to buy as far as equipment for a cow because we've never had a cow before but we're right about there we are in the market officially 
for our first family milk cow. I'm gonna get cleaned up. Sarah is taking the girls to town. School starts soon, but as soon as she gets back, we'll move the goats over here and see how they like it. Well, Sarah's back from town. Got the kids all squared away for school. And while she was gone, I was able to get everything completely finished. One thing that I forgot about that I almost, well, could have been disastrous if I hadn't remembered in time, was I had to put some wire on the gates so that our goats can't get through. These gates are great for cows, but our goats would walk right through them. So I quick had to do that before she got home. You guys, this place looks fantastic. It is a wonderful, actual, anniversary gift that right. this area is ready. Uh, today, the day that this video comes out is our 21st wedding anniversary. And this is a fantastic gift. And now we can officially start looking for our first ever family cow. We may have even found one already that we're gonna be looking at in the next couple days. We'll have to see how it works out. But I'm super excited to see what the goats think. Uh, they have gone through and eaten everything in their training pen. They are anxious to move on to another location. And this area is going to be so good for them. I'm so excited to see if they just, you know, run kind of in their freedom or uh, what they're going to do. Yeah, our goats have never had room like this. I mean, this is going to be a whole new world for them. Uh, just like we talk about with the pigs, you know, we like to raise animals in the most natural environment that they can or that we can for them. And this, for the goats, is going to be heaven. So, let's not wait anymore. Let's go get them out of their pen and bring them over. Well, we're going to walk them from this pen way over to their new location. They've never followed me this far before, so we'll see how it goes. They're probably not incredibly hungry, so this feed that I have for a treat for them, uh, hopefully it still does the trick in the middle of the day. Now our youngest goat, Annabelle, she's the baby. She tends to lollygag behind, so Kevin on the camera will be corralling her and hopefully she'll follow behind uh, pretty easily. So. Hopefully this goes well, otherwise this could be a pretty interesting afternoon. So, let's see. You guys ready? They're also going to be confused. There are a couple things they could try to do. They try to run in the milking room, which I have closed. They might try to run into their other pen, which we have the gate closed, and a piece of equipment in front of. So, we'll see. They're going to be totally confused. Alright guys, come on. Come on. I guess that was too tempting. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Coco. Come on. There we go. There you go, guys. Ha ha. We did it without a huge disaster. Now the fence is on, right Kevin? Yeah. Well, the goats are getting settled in. What an exciting day. Thank you guys so much for joining me as we finish up this project. I thought I was never going to get done with this. Originally, my plan was to have this project done by May. 
and then things just got crazy and things didn't work out the way that I had planned and then our daughter got in our car accident and before I knew it, it just seemed like the summer had flown by. We got so busy with the gardens and everything else, but we finally got it done. One big help was that I had a friend of mine come over who owns a motorized post driver and we were able to put in all of these T-posts in just about one day. So thank you Tom from Three Basket Living for coming over and helping me with that. That was such a huge help. In this rocky ground that we have, putting those T-posts in by hand was just taking way too long. So you guys, this is just the beginning of another adventure for our homestead. We're so happy that you joined us and that you're sticking around to see all the crazy things that we decide to do in the future. If you're enjoying our videos, please make sure to subscribe. And if you think you know somebody else who would like our channel as well, please share it with them. That would mean the most to us. And remember, we're on the lookout for a cow now. That's right, we're looking for a Jersey milker. So until next time, you guys, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.